What's up dogs? A year ago I poured my heart out over this bad boy right here and a lot has changed. A lot has changed. I've even I've even tried to sell it. Last time we hit on price compatibility, performance, and using this for non-macro uses or as a walk around lens. The RF 100mm lens is about to drop so let's hit on all those points again leading up to that release and I'll include tons of sample shots that I've taken on the R6. And give me 27 seconds here guys. My mission with these lens review videos is to give real world perspective on my journey from hobbyist to semi-pro to wherever photography ends up taking me. There's no better lens that exemplifies that mission than this one right here. It's the first one that motivated me to break out of hobbyist photography and try shooting some more paid gigs. And in this video, you'll see what has changed as I've used this lens over time in my journey. If you've been around, you know I'm currently a full-time creative freelancer. No idea how long I can keep that going, but I'll talk openly about my progress in my 2021 Q2 business review. Starting with price because this is fascinating, I paid $8.99 for this lens new, and at the time it was the most expensive lens I had purchased. The price has since jumped to $12.99, and that's a big consideration for me personally when I decide whether or not I might try to sell this again. But we'll get there later. I'm not sure exactly what happened. Maybe it was manufacturing delays. Maybe Canon just wanted to extend that EF inventory. Whatever it is, the new RF version will only be $100 more. So I think buying the EF version new at $12.99 is probably not the play, unless you absolutely need EF to RF compatibility, meaning you have an EF and RF body. And speaking of compatibility, the EF mount version has done a great job from that standpoint for me. It transitioned with me from the T7i to the RP to the R6, and that's pretty damn cool. This is exactly one of the reasons I think that the EF 100mm macro is one of the best first great lenses that you can buy as a beginner because it's gonna work with you on that crop sensor body that you get at the beginning, and then you can adapt it to any RF system that you get later on. Now the downside is the length with the adapter. As I've been more and more spoiled by the compact RF lenses, the length of the barrel and adapter annoy me. Mostly when I hang it from my clips, not when actively shooting. But guess what? Since my initial review, I've switched from a full-time job enjoying photography on the side to an all-out creative freelancer, and I've camped and hiked and shot more landscape or travel photography than ever before. So what I'm trying to say is that it spends a lot of time clipped on my bag. It's as versatile as it is compatible. You still get a great mix of super close minimum focus distance, portrait use, and range use. But because I've always tended to use it more for that range, the RF 70-200 f4 bumped it out of the top spot for me. I've also since rented the Rokinon 85 1.4, and I like that slightly wider angle and faster aperture look. And even the 85 felt a little bit tight at times when shooting indoors at a coffee shop. So if you have an 85 or you have a 70-200, I think it's really important you consider how much you want this specific 100mm focal length. And to be clear, I'm rarely using this for macro shooting anymore. So if you're doing any level of serious macro photography, obviously this will be a better fit than just picking out a 100mm prime. No issues with performance and bonus points for holding up in the rain and the snow. I can't tell you the minuscule differences in how this compares to other high-end Canon primes for things like sharpness, contrast, and bokeh, but it's still working great. It seems to perform better wide open at f2.8, and that's something that you would expect from something higher quality. It focuses nicely, and you also get that older L lens, denser build quality, which some people seem to prefer. And can you still walk around with this? Absolutely, especially on a full frame. It's close, it's long, it's for people. Snipe off a few shots in quick succession, stitch them together in Lightroom, and it even shoots wide panos in a pinch. Again, my inkling at this point is that I prefer 85 over 100. There's really no way to know. So are you hype on the RF 100 drop? I'd like to consolidate a bit myself and snag one of the flagship primes, but I don't think it's gonna be the new 100 millimeter. I haven't used the 51 II. I haven't tried any of Canon's 85 millimeters. And there's a rumored 35 that's coming out. Obviously, I haven't tried that one. If you're looking for a used copy of this lens in great shape, send me a message on Twitter or Instagram, and I can let you know if and when I decide to relist this when I figure out which of the main flagship primes I'll be sticking with. Otherwise, if you're looking for the simplest way to support me and what I'm doing here, uh, just watch any of these other videos that I've also made for you. Oh, that's weird.